yours, to yours, O Lord. Bring us into brokenness. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me. So take my heart and mold it, take my mind and transform it, take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Yes, it is, Lord. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. So take my heart, Lord. So take my heart. Take my mind and transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Take my heart, so take my heart. Less of us, Lord, and more of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. How many believe that God can do all things? And one thing I've been hearing over and over and over again, with everything that's going on around the earth, the nation, the state, whatever, all the evil, all the frustration, anxiety, depression, all that. And all the good that's going, well, all the bad that's going, but God. But God. But God. Because He can do all things. He can remove any anxiety. He can remove any depression. He can remove all evil that inhabits this earth. Hallelujah. But God, Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, the heavens are your tabernacle, glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond us. Holy, holy, 
of heaven and earth. Well, early in the morning, well, I will celebrate the light. And if I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy, holy The universe declares your majesty You are holy High and lifted up, high and lifted up. You are high and lifted up, Lord.
years and and days to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore Jesus, Jesus, the name above all names, and Lord Jesus, Jesus. the sacrifice that you made so that we may Jesus. come into the courtroom to worship our Father God, Jesus. to worship before the throne of the King of Jesus. Kings, Lord of Lords, by the shedding of your blood. You, remo- you removed all sins. Jesus. You removed all sins because you took those to the grave and you buried them to stay forever. That we may be lifted up high and exalted before the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Oh, no. 
nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing, oh nothing, oh nothing, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. How many have decided that the only one that they're going to follow is Jesus Christ? I have how decided. Many, how many have decided? I have decided. Hallelujah. I have decided. There. I have decided. I have decided. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me the world behind me the cross before me no turning back no turning back Still I will fall. 
turning back, no turning back. I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning No turning back, no turning back. Who of you will turn from me? The disciples said, we follow you wherever you go. For where else shall we go? There is none that has what you have. Hallelujah. Lord, we follow Hallelujah. you. We follow you. Yes, Lord. Wherever you go, Father. We follow you. We follow you, Lord. No turning back. 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 Hallelujah. No turning back. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I mean, are you really happy to be in the house of the Lord? Huh? <laughs> praise God. I'm telling you what an absolute joy for me to sit in that chair right there and have Shabbat leading us in worship. I mean, my head has been anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Would you give Shabbat a round of applause today? God bless them. God bless them. Nick, could I have a little bit more love on this mic here? I worshiped my voice weak there. Uh, John and Dan, key of G, please. I, I sprung this on uh, Nate and Jeannie and Dan while, while we were waiting on John. So John's never played this before, but uh, that's why John is John. That won't stop me, man. <laughs> right now. Right now, right now, let the Savior bless your soul. Right, right now. now, don't put off Ooh. until tomorrow what you can do today. Let the Savior bless your soul. Right now, right now, right now, right now, let the Savior bless your soul. Right now. Savior, bless your soul right now, right now, right now. Right now. Let the Savior bless your soul right now. Don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Let the Savior bless your soul right now. One more time. Right now. Right now, don't put off until.
until tomorrow what you can do today. Let the Savior bless your soul right now. Right now. Amen. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't put off until tomorrow what God's got for you right now. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Well, what a beautiful spirit is in the house of the Lord today on this Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, this weekend, the entire United States focuses on all those who gave their lives so that we could be in a church service like this. Nobody's going to come in with guns and arrest you, tell you to uh, deny Jesus. That's not going to happen here in America just yet. That's probably coming. But because of all of those who went before us and willingly paid the ultimate sacrifice, that's what we celebrate in America this weekend. Let us just bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we remember all of our service personnel every branch of the United States military this weekend, we celebrate, God, and we honor them. Help us never to take the freedoms that we have been given, the liberties that we have been afforded as American citizens. Help us never to take that for granted. Today, Lord, we can worship freely because somebody gave their life for these liberties and freedoms that we enjoy. And God, we bless the memories and the lives and the service of everyone that came before us, Lord. We remember them today. And in their honor, we say, God bless America. God bless America. God bless America. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's people say amen. Amen. Would you just take a couple of minutes, just a couple of minutes, get out of your seat, greet somebody, welcome them to the house of the Lord, and then we're going to transition to the next part of our service. Amen, amen, amen. I think this actually... Hallelujah. All right, if you could find your seats, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Find your seats.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise good to see God. you all. So good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. It is so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Even with Amen. these bright lights, I can see you out there. <laughs> we, I want you to know PJ and I are real shepherds. Go and read John chapter 10 and read what real shepherds do. <laughs> not hired people. I want you to know that you as a congregation have not hired me and PJ to be your shepherds. We don't work for you. You don't pay us. You didn't hire us. We work for God. Can you say amen? Amen. God hired us to do this work. Praise God. And a lot of times preachers are accused of doing what we do for the money. I want you to know you could never pay us enough money for what we get to do amen. in the kingdom amen. of God. Amen, amen, Praise God. Praise God. I would think that that would get an applause right there. <laughs> that should get an applause. Praise God, praise God. Because there's a lot of our colleagues that do this for the money. That's why when trouble comes, they run. Yeah. That's why when there are controversial issues in America, they don't speak up. They run and they hide. Right. But when you have true shepherds that have been called and anointed and commissioned by God, true shepherds never run. Amen. They never run. The Bible right. says good shepherds give their lives for the sheep. Yes. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And we are under shepherds under Jesus Christ, the chief shepherd. Mm -hmm. So, when we come together, the shepherds are looking out over the flock. Yes. And we know, even with these bright lights, <laughs> we know when you're here and when you're not here. Especially in small congregations when people are gone, I'm telling you, the shepherds know. Turn to somebody next to you and say, the shepherds know. The shepherds know. Amen. <laughs> So I want to give you a good <laughs> word of encouragement on this Memorial Day weekend because Memorial Day weekend is the official kickoff of summer. Right. And for some reason, people think, well, I've been cooped up all winter. Now it's summer. Now it's my time. And they forget about the church body. Yeah. Well, I need you to know something today. When you get saved... You become a part of something so much greater yes. than yourself. Amen. When you become a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, and Shabbat led it today, I have decided to follow Jesus. Right. The world behind me, the cross before me, though none go with me, yet I will follow. I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Well, I right. got to tell you, because we're true shepherds, because we are not hired people, right? because you didn't hire us to be your hired man, but God called us to be your shepherds. Everybody say amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a very, very strong word of encouragement. Believers are not to check out for the summer. That's right. Don't check Believers out. Believers are not... To check out That's right. for the summer. Amen. I don't mean you check out on God, but I mean many check out on the church. Right. And when you check out on the church, it gives a heavy, hard hit to the body of Christ, mm -hmm. especially in small <laughs> congregations. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say this. I know some of you played hooky while PJ and I were on sabbatical. Just because we went to get rest doesn't mean that you don't have to go to church. Somebody told me like this, yeah, I've been really busy. And, and you know, you weren't there. I thought, my God, that's bold. So what was that telling me? Okay, you didn't have to go to church. I don't have to go right. to church. Or you weren't in the pulpit. And I really like the way you preached to me and the way you make me feel. And I'm not so crazy about the other ones or... I didn't know them. Let me tell you something. There's not a preacher on this earth that wants to preach to empty seats. True. Amen. There's not a preacher in the world that mm -hmm. wants to come in and we prayed, we fasted, and we 
vetted these speakers and we brought in the very best that yes. we felt we could bring in for your benefit. And many people, some people just say, oh, well, Pastor G and PJ, they're on vacation. I don't have to go to church. I can go on vacation. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. We were not on vacation. We were on sabbatical. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference from just an ordinary vacation and your shepherds following what God did in Genesis 1 when he had completed, yeah, Genesis 1, when he completed his work and on the seventh day he rested. Because nobody, nobody, no matter how full of the Holy Ghost they are, no matter how anointed, no matter how good or great they are, nobody can pour out of an empty cup. Mm -hmm. And G and PJ, we were running on empty. And there was no way we could continue to minister, especially at the level that we do. One time I went to go pray for a man in Rochester in the hospital, and I came on a Monday, and he said, oh, it's a Monday. You're working two days this week. <laughs> two hours. And I said to him, I said, sir, very stern. I said, sir, I drove over an hour to come and pray for you. I don't care what day of the week it is. My God heals and answers prayer every day. Every day. <laughs> yes. But I yes, said, I'm yes, going to yes. lay my hands on you, and God's going to heal you. And then when you get out of this hospital bed, I want you to come and try to keep up with me for just one week. Just <laughs> one week. Right. Deacon Don Anderson says, I work eight days a week. <laughs> I said, I want you to just try to come and keep up with me with one week. I said, by next Sunday, you'll be back in the hospital. Mm -mm. That's what true shepherds do. So I'm giving you a word as a true shepherd. If you are a Christian believer, if this is your church, if Pastor G and PJ are your shepherds, please do not check out mm -hmm. on the body. Yes. It's perfectly beautiful. We celebrate it. We encourage it. Take Sabbath. Go on a vacation. Get in the sun. Get in the water. Do whatever it is that you do. But remember that you have a church body that mm -hmm. you are a part of. You have a responsibility mm -hmm. to that body. How many believe that, that Pastor G and Dr. PJ have a responsibility to this body? Yes. You expect us yes. to be here. Guess what? God expects you to be here. Yes. It's summertime now. Go have your fun. You can do it Monday through Saturday. <laughs> Get back to church on Sunday morning. You matter to the church body. Yes, you yes, you do. Yes, you do. Us. Yes, you, really, you do. Really do. Yes. And I'm telling you, some believers go months without going to church in person. I don't really get that. I honestly don't get that. And this isn't a judgment, it's not a condemnation. It is a strong encouragement from true shepherds who are answering to God for you, the sheep. Mm hmm. I could preach days on the responsibility that true shepherds have to the church. So I am pleading with believers <laughs> on this day, think differently. Think according to the scriptures. And you know, some people will send me a message and say, I'm going to be gone the next three Sundays. That's important. We're asking you that if you're not going to be in church on any given Sunday, just shoot us a message and right. say, Pastor G, I'm not planning on dying. I'm not planning on being in the hospital, but I do have to do this for work or I do have to do this. No problem. You're mm -hmm. not going to get any judgment unless you're continually doing this. And then we may say, hey, you need to rearrange your schedule and get back in church. But it's not going to come with judgment. It's not going to come no. with condemnation. No. It's going to come with a lot of love from our hearts. Do you receive yes. that word this Amen. morning? Amen. 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 And we appreciate that when people keep us uh, in the know. That way we know you're okay. And, Absolutely. And, uh, it, you know, we need to do everything with intentionality and in balance. So yeah. it's not like we could never, ever miss a Sunday. It's not being That's legalistic right. like that. Right, but just right. if you need to be gone, let us know. And we just want to give props and really celebrate those in the body who really are here Every time that Absolutely. door opens, Absolutely. a lot of time they're here opening Amen. that door. <laughs> they're locking that door. You know, all of you, you know, you know who you are. We really appreciate you because um, it just means so much. It means, you know, so much to us, but it also means so much to the body. You know, we don't come here just to hear, you know, Pastor G or just to 
be here worshiping with us. We come to worship God together Amen. as our together. church family. So that's Hallelujah. what we want to continue. We I'm going to tell you, one time Peggy told us, I'm going to be at my mother's. I'm going to be gone. And she told us weeks in advance. Well, you know, we got busy schedules. We have busy lives. We came to church and there was no Peggy. And PJ said, have you heard from Peggy? I said, no, I haven't heard from Peggy. Usually she's here by this yeah, time. She always lets us know. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, PJ was so put off by that. She told me, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go over and I'm going to knock on Peggy's well, door. I was concerned because Just to make sure that she was all right. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, if the doors are open, Madam Representative's in church. Amen. And at 1015, she's leading that group in prayer. It wasn't that we were going to knock down your door and grab you and bring you to church. Well, could have come we to were that. just concerned about you. It. Amen. How many think that that's okay that your shepherds are concerned about you? Amen. The Bible says that shepherds will give account to God for the sheep. The Bible says they watch for your soul. Now, you're not going to hear this in every church, especially in every church in America, because many churches in America are led by hired people. Read it right in the scriptures. The hirelings do what they do because they are the hired man or woman. But the true shepherds, they lead from the heart. They lead by example. I was thinking about my own church attendance. I had a broken leg for a year. And do you know when I was in that wheelchair, when I was on those crutches, I did not miss one Sunday. Not one Sunday. And our staff can tell you, they would move me from the wheelchair to the door, transfer me to an office chair to here, and then they would help me get out here to my chair. That's how excited we are about seeing you in church. That's how seriously we are about leading the congregation of the Lord that I wasn't going to let a broken leg keep me on that side of the wall. It could have been much easier to have our staff turn on the camera and me to preach to you from over there. But I want you to know, when I came this morning, I was excited to see you. I'm excited about what God is doing in your lives. I love you with a passion. I am driven in life because God gives us the privilege to be your shepherds. That's the way we feel about you. And I wanted to get that message out to you today on this Memorial Day weekend because I'm telling you, God has so much stuff yes. in his hands. Good stuff. So many Good blessings stuff. that he has yes. in his heart to bestow upon his people. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, amen. all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Before we go any further, I have a couple of things that I want us to pray over today. And I need people that are full of faith to join me in praying today. Um, you know, we raised a lot of money to renovate this beautiful church. Do you know in three years this building's going to be a hundred years old. Ooh, what a celebration yes. we're going to have. Yes, if yes, yes. If the rapture yes. doesn't take place, Beautiful. And we're still here. And uh, the value on what we did on our building is somewhere just under $300,000. All debt free. All debt free. And we didn't get up here and talk about money every single week. God opened the heavens. We got out there. We raised the money. And Amen. here we are enjoying this beautiful, beautiful Praise sanctuary. God. And we've been telling you that there are repairs to do, there are upgrades to do. Nicholas, this is his fourth Sunday mm -hmm. with us as our engineer back there. He's here with us in the live <clears throat> services. He's working through things. He's communicating with Dr. PJ and myself. And there are some upgrades we need to do to the, to the uh, sound system. The next step is probably about $3,000. We've got some step work to do outside. We're not going to receive a special offering. But one of the things that we are looking at is a stair lift for our back staircase. And people that have disability problems, we can get them in the lower door and they can lock themselves into a stair lift chair that will bring them up and then bring them up into the sanctuary. And it's something that we had looked at during the renovation and it wasn't quite a right fit, but we met with an engineer 
uh, engineering company this week, and we have the brochures ready for this. And as I was praying about this this morning, I felt like the Lord reminded me about when he was on the earth and he was preaching in this house, and there were four friends that had a lame friend. He was paralyzed, probably quadriplegic. And when they were bringing him to Jesus, where Jesus was preaching, the house was so full that they couldn't get into the house. The Bible says they couldn't even get close to the door. So what these four friends did was they climbed on top of the roof and they tore a hole in the roof and they lowered their friend down right in front of Jesus. And the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man that was lame, arise, take up your bed and walk. And this morning, I feel like the Holy Spirit has moved upon my heart to bring this uh, before the church. Now, we have messaged our insurance company to see if this is even an option. And then we have to petition the state of Minnesota for a special permit to have this done. And when I was praying about it, I was asking the Lord about this, and the Lord reminded me of that service. And I'm wondering if God is not challenging us as a congregation to take this step of faith, to put our faith on the line and our resources on the line. We don't have to tear off the roof, but we can raise the money to put in a stair lift to help people get to Jesus Christ. Think of what an honor it would be to have a Bible-type miracle happen right here at Grace Christian Church. So we're not going to raise any money for this because we're still early in the game. We need to find out from our underwriter. We need to petition the state. But it's going to be about $20,000 to do this. So it's not a lot of money to make a big impact. And we don't have the $20,000 to do it right now. But I'm telling you, money is no problem when you're doing the will of God. Money Amen. always follows the will of God. Amen. It always does. Let yes. me say it better like this. Provision always follows. Yes. Thank you, When Lord. you're following Amen. the work of God. So I want some people that are full of faith with me that'll just come up here. Don't jump up here. Come up these stairs. If you're full of faith, and let's just lay our hands on this idea and put it before. Yeah. Yeah. Just come safely up those stairs, please. Only if you're full of faith. If you believe that God can do this and he can do this through us. Come on up here. Maybe somebody can help assist. All right. I think this is a great idea. I really do. And they come in various, you know, Chevy, Cadillac, whatever. Um, and they're, they're really, really something for us to consider. To put in an elevator would probably be $2 million, and it would, it would be a major renovation on our historic building, and we just don't feel like that's the idea. We did look at a little tube elevator, but this would be a simple way to do this. You, you folks are full of faith? Believe we can do this? All right. Just touch me or touch this or touch PJ. Lord, we bring this idea before you. And we know that there are good ideas and there are God ideas. We don't ask you for a good idea for this option. We ask you for the God idea. We ask you for the picture-perfect scenario that would work in getting people to Jesus. Lord, those four friends in the New Testament were willing to destroy a roof and disrupt Jesus in the middle of a church service to see a miracle for their friends. Today, God, in our congregation, we have people that struggle with mobility. We want to be those friends to help get them to Jesus. So, Lord, we put this in your hands. We ask you for the God idea. And whatever it costs, that you put the money in our hands, debt free. For 32 years, God, we have never borrowed any money to do the work of God. You have always provided. And I think that's a model for our entire community. 
I think it's a model for our entire country. I think it's a model for our entire world. And you own everything, Lord. So I ask you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, give us the answer through our underwriter. Give us the answer through the state of Minnesota. Give us the answer through this company, Lord. We put it in your hands. We will not worry about it. We will not stress about it. We won't lay awake at night worrying about this. We just believe you that you've given us an open heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now stay up here with me because the next thing Pastor, is... one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. Talk in the mic so we can hear you. Please. Green. There we go. There you go. Just real quick, I pray for a Mercedes anointing oh. on this project. And we got this. With a Chevy Chevette budget. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. We are losing our chief chaplain for the police department and the fire department. That's Pastor John Mitchum. Pastor John Mitchum, I want you to know that we love you, we honor you, we bless you. We thank you for nine years of faithful service in this community. We hate to lose you. Worthington is going to be incredibly blessed. But on uh, Wednesday, Peggy, PJ, and I, we were part of a, an honoring team that honored Pastor John Mitchum. And that one man, now granted he's single. He's single. So I tease him that he's got a lot of time in his hands because he's single. But he solely handled the chaplaincy of the entire police department, the sheriff's department, and the fire department. And I have 20 packets here because we're thinking it's going to take 20 pastors to fill the shoes of Pastor John Mitchum. And they gave this to me which lets me know that our police department and sheriff's department has faith in PJ and myself that we can help recruit some of our local pastors. And what we're thinking is like a team of four to six that we can do on this rotating schedule. And I brought these with me today, and I want the same people that are full of faith believing that our law enforcement officers, that's police department, sheriff's department, all of the staff, all of the personnel, and our first responders, our fire department, that they deserve to have spiritual and emotional and mental health care. How many of you agree with that? Amen. Our head of our safety team is former law enforcement. One time, he opened up the door and a prisoner brutally attacked him, and it was a miracle that Rodney made it through that. Rodney is several degrees black belt. He can handle himself in any situation, but that was something to deal with, wasn't it? And we have others, and these are just some of the things that our law enforcement officers deal with. And I'm asking you to join with me and PJ in praying that God would give us the picture-perfect candidates. Will you do that? Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, your word says we don't have because we don't ask. So we're asking you today to put a love in the heart of our colleagues in this city and county for our law enforcement officers, our first responders, that we would be able to serve those who serve and protect us. That we would serve our local public servants and heroes those ones that seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 and 66 days a year, they're watching for us. Lord, I believe this is where the church needs to be. So I'm asking you to give us favor as we go out into our community. And Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into the field. Today, Lord, I lift these up before you, and I ask you for the grace and the influence and the favor to recruit the right team members. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. God bless you, folks. Thank you so much. I really, really 
appreciate that, and we wanted to get those out in front of you today. So we're going to um, hear our announcements, and then we're going to worship the Lord with our giving. God bless you folks. Thank you. Thank you for coming up here and praying with us. Thank you, everybody. So we'll head to our announcements here. We have a couple for you this week. Uh, We wish you a blessed uh, Memorial Day weekend. And what do we have first there, Gavin? Uh, We ask uh, that you subscribe today to our YouTube channel. Username is at Grace Out Loud. And uh, to follow us on Facebook, our username there also is Grace Out Loud, uh, Grace Christian Church. And so um, we also invite you to like and share this (coughs) video today. We also invite you to download the app. If you haven't already done there, you can scan that QR code there and to uh, bookmark our website, graceoutloud.org. We're really excited about these new platforms to be connected and get some good information out. All right, what's next there? Uh, So following the service today, we're going to have a Grace family meal in the fellowship hall. Uh, hot dogs and buns are provided, and there are some sides to go along with. Everyone's welcome. Thank I you, Ann. I just got to pause for station identification. Okay. Here. I've not, not had a hot dog in months. Today, I'm having a hot dog. All right. I'm looking forward to that there hot dog. There you go. <laughs> and thank you, Angie and team, for uh, coordinating that. And then following today's meal will be our is our baptism Sunday uh, baptism service. And so... Those who are going to that will head on over to uh, the hotel, and we will do the baptisms following. And I think that's all the announcements we have. All right. (coughs) We're going to pray, and if you're giving in the live service today, at the completion of this prayer, you can just get up on your feet and go to the back. And I'll go ahead and give that information first, maybe. Oh, you want to do that? Okay, let's head into that. I got a good message, and I'm ready yeah, we're to raring to go over here. So, <laughs> there's some easy ways to give this morning. The Lord's tithes and our offerings. We have the giving station in the back. Checks can be made to Grace Christian Church, or you can mail them into PO Box One, Albert Lee, Minnesota five six zero zero seven. You may also text the word "give" to eight three 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 four one zero four five four. Or give online on the website, graceoutloud.org, or give online at the app. That's it. Now I'm ready to pray. Now you can go. All right, let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we bless your people today. And as they bring forth an offering of worship to the Lord, Lord, just bless them in the most creative, incredible ways that they would come back and they'd say, this is what God is doing in my life. Lord, we thank you for all of your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you're giving in the live service today, you can go right (laughs) to the giving station in the back. To those of you that are joining us online, welcome. We love you with all of our hearts, and we're in your corner. And this is the time for you to go to your devices, your computers, your phones. And bring the Lord's tithes mm-hmm. and offerings. And a special welcome to our SoCal Connect fellowship. Yes, welcome SoCal Connect. Got up two hours early and are with us today. We love you. God bless you. All right. All right. Nick, if you could give me just a little bit more juice on this. I feel like my voice is a little weak. Gavin, would you come on up here? Would you come around up here? I just wanted to show you this beautiful, handsome, young champion. He really has become a right hand to me in life and ministry. And he's with us today, back with us today. And he just made my heart rejoice I want you to put your hands together for Gavin Gotland. He's a wonderful, wonderful young man. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for all your work. I miss you when you're not here. I get, feel like I got a huge gaping hole in my life when you're not here and you just filled it up today. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. 
All right. So you know that we're in this brand new sermon series that just happened. It just happened. When we got off the ship, we were in our Uber. We were driving uh, to the airport, and our eyes fell on this window that says, all that you need is already here. All that you need is already here. And the Lord birthed this sermon series in our hearts right at that moment. And we're teaching over the next few weeks about how everything that any of us need is already here. It's already present. And it is in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything that you need, you can find in your relationship or through your relationship in Jesus Christ. So if we could go to our scriptures today. Today we're going to ask an incredibly important question. And the question is this. What comes out of you when you are squeezed? What comes out of you when you are squeezed? And I'm going to give you a little bit of a disclaimer here. We're going to get right down where the rubber meets the road in our relationship with God. Because the reality is this. If everything that we would ever need is already in Jesus Christ, and if we are Christian believers as we claim to be, if we have truly made that decision, I have decided to follow Jesus, then you need to know this. In this life, Jesus said it like this, you will have tribulations. Jesus himself said it. In this life, you will have tribulations. PJ and I are going to unpack it like this today. In this life, you're going to be squeezed. You're going to be squeezed. You're going to be squeezed by pressure. You're going to be squeezed by temptation. You're going to be squeezed by sickness. You're going to be squeezed by uh, challenges in your career, challenges in your family, challenges in your mind. Joyce Meyer teaches that the worst battlefield that human beings have ever experienced is the one right here between our ears, the battlefield of the mind. In this life, you are going to be squeezed. So when you are squeezed, what comes Out of you. Let's turn to the scriptures. All right, that's Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Okay, there's another slide. All right, so I say, let the Spirit guide your lives, the Holy Spirit. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. I want you to catch that. When we follow the desires of our own sinful natures, the results are very clear. They're very evident. You don't have to wonder, am I following my sinful nature here? It's very clear. Now, I want you to read this with me. You don't have to read it aloud, but follow along with me because these are the results that are very clear when we are following our sinful nature, not the Holy Spirit guiding us. Sexual immorality, impurity. Lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, 
hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Notice that the Bible calls these sins. The reason why the Bible calls them sins is because inside of every one of us, we have a sinful nature that is driving us towards this litany, not a comprehensive list, but a list of things that are becoming or that are very clear in our lives when we are driven by the sinful nature and not guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't have any forms for you to fill out for self-assessments, but this message today is to help you think about where you're at in your life today. There's no judgment, no condemnation coming from this pulpit to you sitting in the pews. But it is guidance by the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. Now, let's go on. Uh, what's that? We need to go back there. Nope, one, one hit. It begins with, let me tell you again. One more. There we go. Let me tell you again, as I have before. So Paul is having to bring a word of remembrance and in that a word of correction and instruction because he's already told the church this before. And let me just tell you, the word Galatians means it was a, it, it was a region called Galatia. That's modern-day Turkey. And he was writing to the churches, to believers, Holy Spirit-filled believers. And notice his wording. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is pretty strong language. But, thank God for the buts in the Bible. Thank God for the buts in the Bible. Thank God for those conjunctions of hope. But God, Shabbat said that today. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. There is no law against these fruits. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his old rugged cross. And they have crucified them there. Just like Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. He was the imperfect, sinless son of God. He had never sinned. Categorically, he was tempted in every area in which you and I are tempted. But he went to that cross and he allowed sinful human beings to nail him to that cross, shed his blood, so that you and I could be the beneficiaries of salvation, eternal life, holiness, sanctification, and the victory that only Jesus Christ can bring. But believers who are in Christ Jesus, we have nailed our passions and our desires of our sinful natures. We have nailed them to the cross and we have crucified them there. Today, for the next few minutes, and we may have to unpack this over the next couple of weeks, we want to ask you the question. And we're going to ask you to ask yourself this question. What comes out of me when I am squeezed? Let's pray. Lord, your word is good. 
you are great. Now help Dr. PJ and myself. Help us to share this word. Articulate it the way the Holy Spirit would have it to flow in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So we've got some object lessons up here today. Can you take that, babe? We've got uh, a towel because I may make a mess. Thank you, PJ. And we have a tray also for the mess. And we have some what are these? Clear glasses Clear here. Clear glasses. There's nothing in there. No magic. We're not doing a magic show. We're just going to give you this physical, visible object lesson about what we want to share today. And I have a new life hack. I'm not a member of the TikTok university, <laughs> but I'm going to confess to you, I saw this on TikTok. <laughs> this isn't an endorsement from TikTok, and many of you spend way too much time on Amen. TikTok, but here's something I'm going to show you today. So we have some fruit. Mm. What kind of fruit is that, my sweetheart? What kind of fruit is this? Anybody know? Lemon. Lemon. Very good. And we have this one. Oh, I Lime. love that one. That's one of your what favorites. What is that one? Lime. Very good. Very All good. Right. Two out of two. And, and <laughs> this one is what? Oh... Hope it's not a... Coconut. <gasps> no. No? No. Apple. And this big, juicy, plump dude is an... Looks, like, looks like one, but it's an, it's an orange. orange. Yeah, yeah. Is and it? that apple is so tasty. Ooh. PJ, when, whenever she leaves, she just fills the refrigerator with fruit for me. And it's, it's just really working. Let me have that apple, baby. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to somebody on the ship who is not a Christian, but we talked for hours on the ship. And she said, so tell me about this chick, Eve, and the apple. Yeah. I said, well, her name was Eve. We don't know that it was an apple. Oh, oh no, it was an apple. I said, we don't know that it was an apple. We just know that it was a fruit. Oh, no, 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 it's an apple. Well, I could never convince her that the Bible does not say it was an apple. But because of artists, you know, the depiction is that Eve saw the apple. She saw that it was good for her body, was going to taste good, pleasing to the eye, and she ate it. It was a fruit, nonetheless. How many like apples? All right. You know, if you have a desire for an apple, a lemon is not going to suffice. No. Uh, Sometimes at men's breakfast, Rodney orders the freshly squeezed orange juice. And we watch them at Machine, at Main Street Family Restaurant, just squeezes those oranges. If you love orange juice, a lime isn't what you want. No. No. You have to choose the fruit to get the juice that you want. Mm -hmm. So in this beautiful, beautiful orange, if we want to get orange juice, you got to squeeze an orange. Can you do that for us, sweetheart? Can you see that? (laughs) And I'm the one that was going to make the mess. So here's my TikTok hit, hack. This is what I saw on TikTok this week. This is a way that you get juice out of your fruit. And of course, it doesn't work well for me, but it always works well on TikTok. What do you think about that? Isn't that a cool hack? Well, that's pulp. (laughs) So, the point is this. In life, we're going to be squeezed. And when we're squeezed, something is going to come out of us. Not rocket science, is it? Very practical. 
And the Holy Spirit told me to tell you today that living in relationship with Jesus Christ is not rocket science. It's really very practical. So how do we, how do we learn the practical lessons that God has for us? We read the word. Now in America, not a one of us has any excuse for not being in the word right. on a daily basis. On my phone, the version Bible app, I can press a little button and it'll read it to me. I don't even have to read it for myself. The Covenant Church built this app and it makes it so easy to get the word of God in me that you can just press a button and it will read it to you. You can read it on many, many different, in many, many different versions. You can read it. I'm going to read it in the Message Bible to you. I don't, I don't suggest the Message Bible as a study Bible, but a good accompaniment for you. So remember, I read that list of the things in the Bible called sins. Let me read them to you in street language. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Don't raise your hand. But we interact with people in our lives that the only way they're happy is if they're getting their own way. Can anybody say amen to that? And if they don't get their way, guess what happens? You have hell to pay. You and I have to walk on eggshells around them. Why? Because they're people that are living according to the sinful nature that we all have, and they always have to have their own way. Let me tell you this. As believers, we should not be living that way. It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Here, here it is. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods. Magic show religion. Paranoid loneliness. Cutthroat competition. All-consuming yet never satisfied wants. A brutal temper. An impotence to love or be loved. Divided homes and divided lives. Small-minded and lopsided pursuits. The vicious habit. Oh, my God, this one, this one was heavy. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled... Okay, I'm sorry. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival. In other words, anybody that doesn't agree with me 100% of the time, 100% of what we're talking about, you're my enemy. Uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community. And I love this one. I could go on. So when you and I are squeezed, what's going to come out of us is what kind of fruit is growing in us. May I have one of those? Any, any fruit? Yep. I just want to hold it there. So if you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you, growing in you, which by the way, you don't have to work to develop it. The Holy Spirit works to develop it in us. Does that make sense this morning? You don't have to work at loving. You don't have to work at being patient. There are some believers that literally say this, oh, never pray for patience because God will give you trouble. That's magic religion. That is soothsaying. That is sorcery. That's no different 
than saying, here, dump some holy water on me and all my demons will go out. Somebody that I met the other day, they said, can you bless me with some holy water? I said, I don't have holy water. We got tons of bottled water in the church, and I'll be happy to pray over that bottled water, and you can take it and you anoint your house. It's not holy. It's just a point of contact. There are many Christians that are getting into sorcery, idolatry, and before your religious mind goes quick to to, um, judge them on what they're doing, sorcery and idolatry comes in all flavors, all manners in all of our lives. Am I preaching the right church this morning? If you have the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, That's what the King James Version calls it, long-suffering. In other words, if you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you should be able to suffer for a long time with a good attitude. We should not always be saying, oh God, why me? Why me? Why again? I'm waiting for the next shoe to drop. All worried, all anxious, all impatient. Why? Why? Because if we are true believers, when we're squeezed, it's the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is going to emit out of us. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, if you have the fruit of bitterness working in your life, like a sour lemon, guess what's going to come out of you? That one's not squeezing at all. Maybe you could try it with the uh, tongs there, sweetheart. Ooh, that smells good. That smells good. I love lemons. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> we can clean up afterward. All right. So let's say this lemon represents bitterness in us. We've been through trauma. We've been through trouble. People took advantage of us. People burned us. People robbed from us. People stole about us. Stole, stole from us. The devil did this. Life did this. My ex did this. My ex in laws did this. My baby mama. My baby daddy. I feel like Paul. I could go on. If we have the fruit of bitterness at work in our life, guess what? It's going to be bitter nectar. That comes out of us. Very simple. We read it. We read it. This message is going to be so simple, even the most educated among us can understand it. Do you know what Jesus said? He said, unless you receive the kingdom of God like a little child, you're going to miss it. Did you notice that the wording kingdom of God was in the letter to believers in the Galatian region from the Apostle Paul? Anybody who is at work with all of these sinful things in their life, they're going to miss out on the kingdom of God. The message is so brutally simple this morning that we have to receive it as little children. It's not so complicated, not so mysterious, not so abyssal that we cannot see what the Bible writer is saying. These fruits are very clear. So I want you to take a personal assessment this morning. When I'm squeezed by pressure, what's coming out of me? Is it gossip? Is it envy? Is it murderous thoughts? Oh, I wish that person would just die. I've had believers tell me that. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, you have read, thou shalt not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, if a man looks upon a woman and desires her in his heart, he's already committed the act of adultery. Jesus said, you have heard, you have read, you shall not commit murder, but I say to you, if you have heart within, hate within your heart, you have already committed the act of murder. So what is in our heart What we have been feasting on, what we have been nurturing is going to come out of us when we're squeezed, either sweet or bitter. Jesus said it like this, a fountain cannot spew forth 
sweet and bitter at the same time. You have to know this today, that when you have decided to follow Jesus Christ, you have decided to do and act and live as Jesus Christ acted, lived, and behaved. And he went to that cross and he nailed all of our sins, all of the sinful natures that we would have. Jesus Christ nailed it to that cross once and for all. He cried out, it is finished. They took his dead body off the cross. They put it in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he came back out of that tomb. And the Bible says, the Bible says that if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. That is the physical body. That is the nature in which you deal with. God will transform it from dead deeds to new deeds, which means if you had bitter fruit coming out of you, once you get full of the Holy Ghost, when you're squeezed, it's going to be love. It's going to be patience. It's going to be long-suffering. It's going to be forbearance. It's going to be self-control. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. So go home with the scriptures. Read through it. Read through it in various translations and assess yourself. What is coming out of me when my wife and I have an argument? Is it patience? Is it love? Is it understanding? Let's flash that comparison up there on the screen right here, if we can. There's a comparison of fruit of the spirit and fruit of the flesh. All right. Fruit of the spirit, love. Fruit of the flesh, hate and indifference. When Dr. PJ and I are in an argument, which I love to argue with my wife because I love the making up process. I love to argue with her because she shows me how smart she is. I'm at this point of the argument. She's already here and down around the corner. And when I think, oh, that's a good zinger, bam, I send forth that zinger, and she like shoots it right out of the sky. And she's like, pull, boom, boom, just shoots it right out of the sky. But I still love to argue with her. I still love to debate with her because she... She could have been a lawyer. She could have been a brilliant lawyer. And guess what my dad wanted me to be? Not a preacher. He wanted me to be a lawyer. So I try all my good arguments against her, and then she just shoots them right out of the sky. But when I'm squeezed in an argument with my wife, does love come out of me, or does hate and indifference? Do I pull out a whole scroll of things? Well, you did this on April 19th, 2020, and you did this on September 17th, and 1989, right after we got married. And you did this and you did this. What's coming out of you, brothers and sisters, when you're squeezed? How about joy? Does joy come out of you when you face trouble? Does joy come out of you when you just found out you lost your job? Or you have a health diagnosis that just would put the normal person in despair. But remember, you are full of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you're full of is going to come out of you. Does joy come out of you when despair used to come out of you? Does peace come out of you, or is it anxiety? Did you know that the Bible says be anxious for no thing? You can't do that on your own, but you can do it when you're full of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Is this making sense this morning? How about patience? Is patience coming out of you? When you're squeezed by situations that just feel like they've got you by the jugular, or is it impatience? When's this going to happen? God, I prayed about it. You should have answered this yesterday. Your word says you know that what I have need of even before I ask it, so why should I even have to ask? Oh, I'm so mad at you. Why should I pray? Because you never answer. What's coming out of you when you're squeezed? Is it patience or is it impatience? Is it kindness or rudeness? You know, we had this prophet come and preach here one time. Everybody talked about how great he was and what great prophecies he would give. And we thought, okay, let's bring him. Let's have a beautiful service. And we had a beautiful service. The prophecy was so accurate. So accurate. 
And then we went out to Perkins. We took them out to Perkins. And our waitress was flustered because they'd had a busy day. She'd been working all day. She was tired. She was on her feet. And do you know that prophet and his wife were so rude to our waitress? They snapped at her. We were eating at Perkins after church. We were all tired, but she was doubly tired. And they acted so rude that I actually stopped the conversation. And I said, excuse me. Do not talk like that to this server. I said, what's your name? She told me her name. I said, how many hours have you been working? And she said, I said, do you have children you're taking care of? Yes, I'm a single mom. I work three jobs. And I looked at these people. I said, you will never be welcomed again to come and minister in our church. I will not allow you to prophesy in church and then tear our server to shreds. That is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you, we have never allowed them to come back to minister in this church. Why? Because it's very clear. It's very evident what we are full of when we are squeezed. So she didn't get your order just right. So what? So she didn't get your eggs just perfect or didn't get your lemon slices right here on time. Let me tell you this. I I read this somewhere. The proof of Christianity is not how much we are thrilled by the Spirit when we're in church, but when we leave the church and show the world how we have been filled by the Spirit. Do you know that God cares more about how you treat your family when you walk out that door after a beautiful church service? God cares more how you treat your server at the restaurant after you've left a beautiful fire burning service, Holy Spirit fire. God cares about that. Do you know that God cares how you treat your employer? Employers, God cares how you treat your employees. And what we are showing to God, to ourselves, to our family, to the world, is what has been put inside of us when we're squeezed is what comes out of us. If you will go to the Albert Lee Tribune today, you will receive, you'll see my latest article. And it's on the fruit of kindness. Mark Twain wrote that kindness is a language that the blind can see and the deaf can hear. Do you know that as we as spirit-filled Christians should be the kindest people walking the planet? I'm going to say that again. We as spirit-filled believers should be the kindest people walking the planet. When I am dealing with my wife, when she is dealing with me, when we are dealing with our children, when we are dealing with that, that phone personnel on the phone, and you've been on there two or three hours, or you're trying to talk to your insurance company, or you're trying to get that part that came wrong, God cares about how you treat that person on the other line. Bishop Mark Griggs was preaching to us in Ellsworth, Wisconsin last year sometime, and he said he had a problem with their church insurance, and he was trying to call, trying to call. They live in a major metropolis, and he said he had been waiting 27 minutes. He said, I had things ready to come out of my mouth just of judgment and bitterness because I was so frustrated with this situation. I had been waiting 27 minutes. The young lady came back on the line and said, by the way, Pastor Mark, you don't know me, but I've been visiting your church the past seven weeks and your sermons are really touching me. Pastor Mark said, I had no idea that the agent on the other line had been coming to hear me preach in our church. Maybe you don't know that person. Maybe you don't know that foreign call station agent that you can barely understand their English. Is this where the rubber meets the road? What's coming out of us? Kindness is a language that the blind can read, blind can see, the deaf can hear. PJ and I, when we were on our sabbatical, many times we were immersed in languages that were different than our own. We rode on buses. We shared uh, uh, 
shuttles, airplanes, ships, with people that do not speak our own language. But let me tell you something. A smile was something they could understand. Holding the door for somebody was something they could understand. I, I don't have all my leg strength back, but many times I, I stood up and I thought, I'll just hold on to this bar on the shuttle bus because there's a little lady that looks like she can use the chair more than I can. That's something the blind can see and the deaf can hear. Children of God, when we are being squeezed by pressure and temptation, what is coming out of us? Is it rudeness? Is it kindness? How about goodness versus evil? How about faithfulness versus unreliability? Are we people of our word? When we say we're going to do something, do we do it? Or do we call ahead and say, hey, I, I just I can't make it on time. I can't show up today. And, and, and not with a repeated succession of that. When we are squeezed by time, when we are squeezed by pressure, when we are spe- squeezed in our career, is it faithfulness that is shown? How about when we're squeezed by family events, faithfulness to the house of the Lord? What comes out of us? Do we set every family event and every holiday ahead of our attendance in the church? Let me tell you something. God cares about your attendance. In-person attendance, he cares about your faithfulness to the body of Christ. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. How about gentleness? When we are squeezed by family situations, money problems, time crunches, is it gentleness? Is that the juice that's coming out of us? Or is it abrasive harshness? Let me tell you this. One time PJ was in our back office at our home. I was a little hungry, had my head in the refrigerator. And I heard PJ, wah, 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 wah. That's what it sounded like to me. (laughs) And I didn't even pull my head out of the refrigerator. I said, woman, if you've got something to say to me, get out here and say it. And the Holy Spirit said, how old are you? I was 33. I'm 56 now. I remember it like it was yesterday. I said, I'm 33. He said, then act like it. He said, pull your head out of the refrigerator, walk down there and ask your wife what she just shouted out to you. And I shut the door and I put my head down and I walked the walk of shame. (laughs) And I said, sweetheart, what what did you just scream at me? She said, first of all, she's typing, I didn't scream. I raised my voice to you to tell you how much I love you. And I thought, baloney. (laughs) But it was true. You see, it was abrasive harshness that was coming out of me. All because I misinterpreted what she was doing. Tone has a lot to do with it. I'll give you that one. But let me tell you something. This is the message that God sent us here to give you today. Because we we are living in a world that is literally seeing the evidence of the fruit in our life. And what is it, children of God? Is it the fruit of the Holy Spirit, or is it it the fruit of me having to have my own way all the time? Hello? Gentleness, abrasive harshness. How about when our kids are just acting the fools? I've heard. How about when your husband has made all the wrong decisions that week? Or your wife has done everything that just irritates you? What is coming out? Is it abrasive harshness? Do we just fly off the handle and just cuss and scream and slam doors and throw plates and storm out? That's not the evidence of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is the evidence that my flesh is out of control. That is the evidence that I am wanting and demanding and expecting my own way and everybody else has to bow down to big old me. Well, let me tell you something. There's somebody a whole lot bigger than me 
and his name is Jesus Christ. God is excited about making the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit in your life. And there's no judgment in this. It's just clearly evident what is working in our lives. Are we shouting things at our children or our spouse or even the neighbor down the street? Things that we're going to regret later on. Let me tell you this. Let me say this very strongly. The things that we say in anger can be forgiven, but they'll almost never be forgotten. I'm going to say that again. The things that we say in anger can be forgiven. Your children will forgive you for what you said. One time I was in the garage working with Elisha, and man, I let it fly. And I looked up and my son said, 17 bad words, naughty words, just came out of your mouth. I said, you counted? He said, every single one. I began to weep. And I got on my knees right there with my son. I said, I beg your forgiveness for the example that I just gave you. I beg your forgiveness and I'm asking the Lord to forgive me. Parents, spouses, Christians, The words that we say in anger, in haste, with abrasive, harsh tones and words, they can be forgiven. But I guarantee you, they are almost never forgotten. How about self-control? Here's the one that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with me the most. I had this conversation with the Lord as I was considering this. What comes out of you when you are squeezed? And so I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord... I did this self-assessment, and um, I think I'm doing pretty good with love, joy, peace, kindness. I went down the list. But when I got to this last one, the Lord said, time out, G. We got to talk about this one. He said, this is where you need some work and development in your life, and I'm the one that can help you with it. He said, many times when you're squeezed, you run to food. Self-control, self-control. Many Christians believe in magic. Get some faith healer in here, they'll pray for me, I'll fall down on the floor, I'll speak in tongues, I'll flop around, I'll get up and run, and all my problems will be away. No, those are fairy tales. That's magic, if that's what you're expecting from that man. Only God can do the miracle of transformation in your life. He promises it in your word. You cannot get from another human being what you can only get from God. I believe in prayer lines. We do prayer lines. I believe in miracles. God performs miracles. I believe in healing. I believe in speaking with tongues. I believe in falling out on the floor. I've done it a number of times. I believe in laughter. I believe in all of this, but I don't believe in it like magic. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many tongues you can speak in. If you don't have love, you're nothing but a gonging bell that is so irritating and annoying. Because it's not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Think about that. If I don't have self-control, when I'm squeezed by pressure, and man, since PJ and I have been back in the saddle, we've been working like dogs. Meeting with people, prayer deck is back open, over to Rochester to pray for people, back in the jail. We are back in the saddle. Thank God I'm feeling 10 years younger. Because I'm feeling like I can keep up with it. But let me tell you something. There's moments in there when I'm squeezed by pressure. There's moments in there when I'm so squeezed by my schedule. I'm squeezed because I'm not losing maybe as much weight as I think I should. So then I run to those simple carbs. I run to that comfort food. And the Holy Spirit told me, you need some development in there. God cares about you controlling yourself. The Bible says do not be drunk with wine, or we could say intoxicating substances. The Bible says that. Are you running to wine or beer or vodka or whiskey or something like that? Oh, I I can't handle this. I I just gotta have a I gotta have a shot. No, you need a shot of the Holy Ghost in your life. You need a good infusion of the Holy Spirit 
coming upon your life because then you're going to be feeling guilty. You're going to be hungover. You could get in that car and make a bad decision. You could call somebody and tell them off or tell them some stuff that you shouldn't be telling. The Bible clearly says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Am I running to thing, to watch things I shouldn't watch or listen to things I shouldn't be listening to? Where am I going in this self-control realm? Can I hold my tongue when I would just cut somebody to pieces? Did you tell me that I held my peace in a situation here recently? I don't know what it was. Oh, my haircut. I got this horrible, horrible haircut, and it cost me like... 50 bucks, and I was so upset. <laughs> but you know what? As I was sitting in that chair and all my Samson locks falling on the floor, <laughs> and I knew it was going to cost me a pretty penny, <laughs> and the dude, the dude, the dude spun me around like he had just created a masterpiece. And I walked out of there with my big body and my minute head. <laughs> I remember having this conversation in my mind. Don't be angry with PJ. Don't be angry with Susie. They were just trying to help you. Keep your mouth shut. Put a smile on your face. And, and, and I was dead quiet yeah. all the way to the house, and I went in and I but washed. Not mad quiet. Not right. Know what that is. Right. Yeah. I went in there and I washed my hair and I tried to put some gel and I tried to, you know, like get the spikes to stay. There wasn't nothing there, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I would have done a better job. <laughs> but I said to myself, you're, you're 56 now. You're not a dumb, young, immature G anymore. You're full of the, I mean, these were things I painfully went through in my mind. Don't hurt your wife's feelings. Don't hurt your daughter's feelings. They're hurting for you. Has this message